Hey, good evening, Facebook Live. We're coming at you with two special guests this evening, kind of as a little treat for getting through the four-part data series with uh, text function, number, and Boolean. So I want to kind of introduce some of our guests here. So he's the man with a plan to get you hired with Excel, a leading voice within the Excel healthcare industry, a networking social media expert, author, blogger, PhD student. We have George J. Mount here on the line. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. That was a very complete and spirited introduction. Oh, no problem yeah. at all. And another guest of ours, we have a three-time Microsoft Excel MVP, co-host of Excel TV, the YouTube sensation over at Excel on Fire, the band with a self-proclaimed mission to whoop crap data's ass using oh, data, whoop data, data analysis, the creator of Datascopic.net, yeah. D. Du Soleil. Dobre vicher, kak gelal yudi. Also in, in his right. bear's uniform tonight. That's true. <laughs> All right, here we are. Here we are. I'm excited about this. Uh, so yeah. I wanted to kind of get get the boys here together because they were asking, what is all this stuff with RXL that you keep posting about? So I want to kind of go over Reddit and really kind of go into maybe some discussions on being authentic and kind of finding communities, not only where you can kind of build your skills but also contribute because i think anybody that's worth their salt really needs to give back because if you're just hoarding your talents it's of no use to anybody here um, so i'm going to share a screen here just on a main monitor and we're going to kind of take a look here at our excel oh i'm going to scale out a little bit here so oz i know you've contributed a little bit in some discussions but you're like there's too much going on all the time i don't know where to start and it is a very yeah. confusing site. So whenever you first come in, it's your landing page. And you can subscribe to anything that you want. So if you want to go into world news, you can check that out. Politics, pictures, funny, anything you want. Let's try something All funny maybe for a change. Sneaking up on a tiger. I, oh. <laughs> I do not recommend. No. You could try it. <laughs> oh, oh <geez. laughs> So, so Wait, there's... what happened to the guy? Oh, God. I hope he's still alive. He's disappeared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the really kind of the part that I enjoy is going over to the RXL community and how you would kind of navigate this if you were to just wanting to get started out contributing is all the different navigation panes up top. So they have solved issues. So maybe where somebody has helped somebody solve a problem oh. or unsolved. That's okay. nice. So unsolved is kind of, you know, this is always where I always come to first start out my day, maybe check out a few things and see where people's questions are at. And, it, you know, if we could maybe help them. So, I mean, to be a good analyst, you need to be able to answer people's questions. No matter how difficult, how undocumented, asking probing questions will help you out immensely. And I think you, okay. you guys probably both find that, that in your own line of work, right? Yes. I agree with yes. that. Because um, when the question was, you know, first brought up about, you know, being a good analyst, you should be able to help people no matter how vague the question, right? You got to know how to ask the right questions to fish out where the help is needed. Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and take us back here. So kind of looking here, maybe at this question, in this spreadsheet, I'm trying to get a formula yeah. to find out how much is needed for value uh, in column C to move up rank. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. Okay, column A is compare. Rank needed value reference. All right, so I mean, the, from first looking at it, the data is structured fairly well. It's in. Oh, now is this like an attachment? Yeah, somebody posted yeah, it this was. as a picture. Okay. So, I mean, looking at this, this feels all right to me. You know, it has a field and it has records. You know, I'd always recommend getting right. in a table format. Uh, yeah. So column A is comparing the row in column C with the entire column D. How much is needed for C2, which is rank three, to move up to rank two? Hmm. C2 and C3. C3. Three. 
Mm. Okay. You guys got are the wheels turning? Yeah. Go ahead and uh So what what is the formula that's in uh A2? Oh we don't have that, man. They just took a photo. Oh Lord. <laughs> This is where because now I'm into. wondering, how did they all wind up with rank three? Oh, that's what I'm wondering too. Right. I don't know if that was just like a placeholder, and they didn't really know how to do that. Um. I mean, it sounds to me like, oh, what's the, what's the difference between column C and column D? Like, what what does a reference mean? Well, let's go and take a look back here. How much is needed for... It doesn't even go into column D. Column A is comparing the row in column C with the entire column D. The row in column C. The entire row, column D. Hmm. They're not always easy over in RxL. Let me just put it that way. They're all... <laughs> yeah, it almost sounds like, like she wants to just compare like the one cell c2 versus like all of column d but they're all kind of like comparable values so i don't think that's what they're going for yeah let me try mm. and uh i'm gonna do something fun real quick i'm gonna grab this link here i'm gonna say we're working on your problem live over on Facebook if you want to drop by and see if we can work through it. I'll be very curious. It'd be great if they did. Yeah. Because this is one of these that leaves me with a whole lot more questions. But not every question can be answered on the first go, right? And I think that's what we right. kind of learned as that's analysts. True. You know, it, if everything was was that easy, it would be like, all right, why don't you just get it, uh, God, I don't even know where to start. You know, that's more like a function, rank. You know, I think we already kind of went through down the line here. How did you get to rank three? What is your reference? There wasn't yeah. enough there. Right. But, you know, so, some are not too bad. So, like, let's look at a solved. Let's kind of see how people are kind of done uh, mm. some different issues. How to. Oh. There's some long ones here today. How to open a combo box. Oh, Oz, it's your favorite. It's uh, VBA. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Well, if I can plug John Akampora's VBA seminars this week. Oh, he's Check great. Check him out, excelcampus.com. He's got one more day. Mm -hmm. But uh, See, that's what we do as a community. Is it, it's a bit yes. A. Yeah. <laughs> Cross from a populated combo box. Yeah, and really that person's issue was they just misspelled it. That was it. Oh. Okay. That's VBA nice. is volatile, right? So you misspell something and obviously it's going to change down the line. Combo box two, so they weren't even renaming it. Just kind of letting it Excel auto name it. But, wow. So that's kind of that's kind of the uh, the space of solved and unsolved. But I think really kind of where the meat and potatoes come in at is whenever people get into discussions. Uh, one that I really enjoyed here was I have an interview in sixteen hours and I'm dying. <laughs> So I have an interview for a data analyst role, and they'll be testing me on my Excel skills. Uh, they're basically yeah. talking about manipulating. Those, oh, go ahead, Oz. Those are always tough because that's in the world of um, I'm trying to change careers, and everything I want to do mentions Excel in the description, or I want to move up, and I can no longer hide from Excel. And it's hard to know how to help somebody like that because I have no idea what they're going to be doing. Yeah. So what would you recommend somebody going in into an interview? Well, I, okay, George, George is our George. interview guy. This, this never happens. No, uh, so I, I would say the first thing uh, that someone like in this situation should understand is if 
and this sounds bad, but if they've learned any Excel in school or you know in training, it's probably not all that helpful because the the thing that you don't really understand in those situations is you're not going to get well clean data. So I think just having the mindset that you're going to be cleaning data a lot, like a lot, a lot, the majority of your time, I think puts you ahead of like 80% of, of interviewees. And you don't even know anything yet. You're like, it's almost like philosophy, right? Like, you know that you don't know. Um, <clears throat> so, so I think that's important. Um, and I still think that like, you know, if you can master the VLOOKUP and we're not going to get into the, you know, holier than thou index match thing, oh, yeah. that aside, um, <laughs> and pivot tables, um, you know, those two, those two things serve specific purposes in cleaning data and kind of helping you, you know, make sense of, of the mess that you get. Um, and I, I, I really think that, you know, yeah, he has it in a day or two. You know, just knowing the basics, like Oz says, nobody's going to know everything. But I think as long as you kind of can structure that you can go in there and say, what are your problems with data? I know that it's dirty. You know, how can I help? And then go from there. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, you got me thinking about this in a different way. Um, this when I got my first real analyst job they were looking for somebody who could think data and be willing to dig because um i remember monica johnson saying oh that's just a v lookup v lookup oh that's just a pivot table i never heard of such a thing you're scaring the hell out of me but the thing was they had already recognized that I would get up off my ass and go dig and ask questions when the data was a mess and not accept that, well, that's what they gave me. Well, I would uncover that the report was five years old, but they needed somebody who would find out that the report was five years old. They could show me the pivot table. And then there are things like when numbers don't add up, you got all these all this data from the product lines and that totals three million dollars and then it gets divided up amongst all these sales reps and their assistants and then there are things that don't get paid commission on does all of that come back to three million dollars now you have to first have an instinct that they do need to add up and if they don't add up where do you start looking and you have to give a damn to get to that point. And so I felt like those are fundamentals, giving a damn and getting up off your ass and learning how to, uh, what, what good questions to ask. Then somebody can show you a, a pivot table. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the easy part. There's first, the hard part is having the instinct and giving a damn. I think that was my response too. to his question was be honest in the things that you don't know, but at least go into detail on how you might logically try and accomplish the issue. Yeah. So, yeah. And the yeah. big thing um, was, you know, dealing with people's commissions and then them saying they're concerned that I don't have a big mouth that finding out that so-and-so is really killing it and they're way ahead of quota and somebody is so far behind they're probably never going to catch up to their quota no they, no they needed somebody who wasn't into gossiping yeah so all of that stuff made more of a difference i think to being a successful analyst than having ex kick-ass excel skills <laughs> uh no i mean excel can only take you so far you know at some point it really comes down to you having the yeah yeah uh, the ability to so logically that, work through your problems Right. And then, yes. you know, being at a point to where if you don't know VLOOKUP or you don't know how to nest things inside of other things, a person can if statement their way a long way. <laughs> and then they learn to do things better and think about efficiency and layout and stuff. But if you can think right, you can sum and filter and sort and if statement your life away and, and be successful. Well, I, I think even past the uh, if statement. So, how do they get to the point where they're 
going to the Googles, going to the online communities and starting to yeah. ask questions and logically form kind of the, uh, the basis in which they're going to build their knowledge over time. Because, you know, today's V lookup is tomorrow's index match. Yeah. Uh, right, right. To kind of start the war here with George. It? Oh, I'm uh, agnostic. I just, uh, you know, the kind of chip on the shoulder of, of some people. That, yeah. That, that's, okay. that's okay. Um. But where did you guys end up I, yeah. in, in kind of your starting or your formidable days or years? Kind of where, where would you guys end up or go? Or did it, you have what, a resource what, that was teaching you or were you self-taught? I was mostly self-taught. Like I didn't really learn a lot um, until I got onto the workforce. And the thing that kind of compelled me to to look around was spending just hours doing boring stuff. And the one that really sticks in my mind is uh, I had a boss who there was all this old inventory that we wanted to clear out. He went through the spreadsheet and he highlighted in orange everything that he wanted pitched and then i had to go through and like i don't know enter it into the system as like pitch it or something and i didn't know that there was a way that you could filter by color oh yeah and i didn't even think about like you know googling that or anything and i swear to god i spent like five hours like deleting every row that didn't have color and and after stuff like that, I was like, you know what? I could have been doing something useful. I just spent five hours deleting rows. Um, so I started, I mean, I didn't really understand that there was a whole like blogging community. Um, so I kind of went about it myself. <laughs> um, and then- And, like, and, and like, like what years was this? Yeah. Um, this is probably like a couple, three years ago. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, so Jordan Goldmeyer um, happened Uh-oh. to live in Cleveland kind of around the time that I was getting started. And you know, we went out for some drinks and uh, stayed in touch. And uh, he was kind of my uh, guide into the Excel world. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. I always okay. enjoyed the times that I did things wrong. You know, if it was a month, if it was five years, however long it took me until I once got it right. I always appreciate those long those long periods. And, now and how I, do now you I can look back. How do you say you, you like those periods and what's an example of something you did wrong? Uh not using table objects. Mm-hmm. You know, I put that as like three years of my Excel existence. And then as soon as the the time period when I found control plus T, that opened up every gateway, every door with an Excel, and it was like, oh, wow. So this is what the program was meant to be. Mm. So, you know, structural references. Man. And after that, it was, you know, sky was the limit. Um, now wow. I'm kind of playing around it with arrays a lot more within formulas. And Ooh. yeah, I, I see the benefit <laughs> to them, and you know they're great, but they're also frustrating at the same time. Uh-huh. But it's always nice to, like, Man. it's always nice to build something and then get it back on your lap within, like, three years and be like, oh, wow. I look at the thing that I did back then, and now I see where my skills are at now, and I'm so far more advanced. And you yeah, always love sure rebuilding your own work. You know, I find a lot of enjoyment but, within that. And you know, and I keep thinking about when I started, I had slowly developed this three-day process of cleaning some data. Um, it had to happen monthly, and it started to get customers to stop calling with complaints. And okay, the buck stops with me. How am I going to get them to stop complaining? And that's always my motivation, even today, is there is somebody who's miserable because they got to live with this data. They don't care if I use index, index match or VBA code or if I went and arranged leaves out here in my backyard. They don't care. They want to, instead of being on their lunch break calling me, they need to go have lunch. That's what I care about. And um, that's how I developed this three-day process of cleaning all this data. Um, Did it need to be three days? Yeah. In retrospect now? To, today, no. To, no. 
No, it doesn't need to be. Um, it'd be a couple hours because it was that messy. Um, but I, I, I liked it. I liked that I was solving these people's problems. And then the next month, the calls would be fewer. The complaints would get fewer. Um, but yeah, it was a whole lot of sorting and filtering and if statements I didn't know about VLOOKUP or INDEX or CHAR. That would have helped a lot back then. Because um, one thing was I had get all this data and I had to whittle it down to all these names to print certificates. And then I had to fish out like McDonald and make sure there was a capital D in there. Because after I did all the data cleansing, I had to do a mail merge and print certificates out. Okay, so Harriet McDonald gets a certificate. All right, yes, but I can't print out a certificate that's got a lowercase d in it. Now that's going to create problems. You know, O'Neill oh, with the apostrophe and the capital N. All of that stuff was in that three day process I had. I'm wondering I'm, now, I'm, if McDonald, does it does it recognize proper? No. Prop? No. 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 <laughs> gotta have gotta have ways of fishing that stuff out. Oh. So reading through your book, Oz, you, you kind of got over advanced filtering. Did you have much of that back in the day, or were you using that? I, I could no, no. Because after reading that, it, it, it was like a whole new world for me, but one that I feel like I will never use. Just okay. It, it's okay. very it's very unique in this situation is when it, when I think you would just with like power query and other things now. Right. And right, and auto filter our advanced filter is not intuitive. Yep. You do need some kind of guidance with it. Um but it is pretty handy if you can get comfortable with it. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know how many people are truly comfortable with it. Yeah. George, what's been the uh, aha moment for you? Um, I don't know if there was any single one. I think it was just, um, you know, looking at Excel as something to kind of advance my career with and not just kind of assuming that I was going to learn what I needed to kind of on the job, that it's kind of a bigger world out there. Um, so that was, uh, that was important for me. It, you know the blogging and, and everything that kind of came with it um, definitely made me look at Excel a lot more differently. And then just this kind of thing that gets loaded on your PC that you know I can kind of use, you know, well, to whatever poor yeah. ability. I always go back to the uh, what is the the stat? Ninety five percent of people know how to use five percent of the application. I mean, is that how you kind of felt when coming into it? Because I always hear people that are like, oh, I'm like a solid seven or eight out of ten. And then I look at my own skills. I'm like, I'm a four. Like the guys that I follow, you know, the John Akimporas, the uh, Mike Gervins, you know, the Osby Du Soleil's. Uh, these people are really doing some crazy stuff. Wow. So. And a lot of that came from, yeah, the freelancing and seeing so many different needs for Excel, and that gave me a respect for the tool. And. To get away from the idea of mastering the tool. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, because, it, because it's a need-based thing and a consistency thing. And having an insurance agent ask me to teach him how to clean data, well, you got to be in it, elbows deep, every day to master that. Yeah, and and I, ca I can't teach you that. Can't teach you. Um, and talking with somebody, I needed some help scraping web pages, and I contacted somebody who knows way more than me about Excel, or so I thought. I mean, his world is connecting Excel to databases. And so Excel is truly an, a, a development platform. Oh, 100%. Yes, yes. So scraping web pages is different from connecting to databases, which is different from cleansing data and different from developing dashboards uh, or using solver or any oh. type of the what, <laughs> what if analysis stuff where it's just like i don't even spend any time within that corner of the program but there's people that uh -huh. do you know scientific engineering within it that would blow my mind uh, so. yeah that is uh 
I've, I've used, I used to actually Solver quite a bit when I was doing more like retail stuff for staffing optimization. Um, and and it's, it's crazy that, that it's in there. But like, like you mentioned, so I feel like probably one of the newer, less experienced Excel users uh, in, the, in our little blog community. But, and this is true for a lot of blog communities, that it doesn't matter too much. Like I, I can come in and people want to help. And yeah. I think, you know, the thing about this community is, you know, I, I don't see like Bill John or Mike Gervin as these like gods anymore, although they are in their skills, but they're still people. Uh, and that, you know, it's so it really levels the playing field. Um, and and makes you you know not so worried that oh i suck at excel right. um, and, and i think <laughs> that you getting into and, and i want to give a shout out to haran who's up at one o'clock in the morning in oh, london. london yeah yeah thanks brother yeah yeah um but you're like uh you're saying this gets into what i think is style what is your style yeah. what is your position because walter payton ran different than Eric Dickerson ran and different from Marshawn Lynch and how he runs and both of them are, are all three of them are, are badass running backs with their own style and then you can't compare oh, oh, Walter Payton to Brian Erlocker those are different positions and I feel like you know when I deal with Excel I might be an Earl Campbell just wearing people's asses down <laughs> Because <laughs> I am not fast, I you know I don't use keyboard shortcuts, but I get the ball in the end zone, and I might have to step on somebody's back, <laughs> and it might take four plays as opposed to you know like one breakaway like Ricky Williams, but I, I get it in there. But I think that's what's good. Yeah. Like you're you're staying true to yourself, and kind of that's where it's also like the authentic portion. Like how, you know, it's almost a somewhat torture, like giving your, giving away back to the community uh, within Excel because there's so many people doing it so well across the world, but you're trying to find that one little mm -hmm. space in which you fit in. And Oz, right. you, you're right. great right there with your explanation where you're like, you know what, that that's not me, but here is what is me. And a lot of people are, are you know, kind of latching onto that. You know, I found you through Excel TV. I was like, who is this crazy guy talking about Sriracha all the time? <laughs> Wearing the damn Bears jersey. I love it. And then, you know, next thing you know, I, I see this kid come out of nowhere. I'm like, who's this George J. Mount? He's all over everybody's Excel stuff. He's networking with top to bottom the best Excel bloggers. You know, yeah. how did you guys find your authenticity within the community? Uh, I'm still, it's still in progress. I, it, it's funny that like, you know, people ask me what, what's my blog about? And my only answer now is like, it's, it's Excel ish. Um, and, you know, I go back and forth all the time. Is this an Excel blog or not? And, you know, ultimately I leave it at like, well, very few people's jobs are just Excel, you know, 100% of the time. So That's I don't feel like my, my, my blog has to be Excel 100% of the time either. Um, and really, my blog started with the mission of, you know, helping people who feel like they're just wasting too much time at work and not really, you know, realizing their full potential as an analyst because they're, you know, doing things very inefficiently in Excel all the time. Um, and then from there, it kind of branched out to some like career management kind of stuff. Um, I have a background in healthcare finance. Um, so I did a course on, you know, especially in healthcare, a lot of people who were like nurses or doctors and in healthcare know, finance, don't have any kind of um, business training and they get thrust into more of like a management role where they're doing budgets and scheduling and they're using Excel a lot. It's the first time they've really, um, so that kind of market is, is what I try to do. Um, you know, helping people that kind of end up using Excel that, you know, they don't want to be, and this is a whole nother topic. They don't want to be a data scientist, right? Like not everybody wants to, you know, be crunching huge stack databases in Python. They just want to build their budget in Excel and have it not take three days. Yep. Um, 
so did that's kind of where from? I... Where did the scientist, the guru, the ninja... That's always something I struggle with. I just want to solve a problem. What is your problem? Yeah. How do I solve it? Yes. So, yeah. You know, if, if Excel this... decides to... Or, you know, if Microsoft decides to delete Excel tomorrow, I'm still going to be a problem solver. Whatever program we're going to, I want to solve your problem. Unfortunately, for them, they've created such a great problem or such a great program that it's now a large scale problem of over 900 million people using it. Uh, great problem to have though. I'll put it that way. Great job security. Kind of going back to George's thing is helping people either get into the job market, especially now with retooling their skills or just uh, advancing themselves. Like once and, you're and in I'm the role, how, not... how do you get past just the entry point? And, and I like what George is saying about not everybody wants to be able to do all of this stuff in Excel. They need their budget. They need their uh, uh, delivery routes to be accurate. Um, all kinds of things. They want to know where they are vis-a-vis -vis targets in a project. That's their thing. Um, they don't care about something is a volatile function and it would be more efficient for you to do this no 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 they don't want that um but it's taken freelancing for me to see that and also i draw a lot from having uh studied well for two months i studied uh playing guitar back when i was 15 and then picked up bass when i was 38 and when I was 15, it was painful. My father was like, learn your scales. Don't play any songs. Learn your scales. I had no context for that. But then to get to be 38 and learn really simple songs and get it feeling good. Um, and then I wanted to learn more. But then there would still be, okay, I'm comfortable with the bass in my hands. But now here is this jazz tune that's over my head. How can I still get this music to sound good? And that is knowing your true skills and what needs to be delivered. And it could be, I just, I'm just gonna play root notes on the bass and that's the equivalent of just if statementing my way <laughs> to Nirvana <laughs> until I can do better. I mean, it's one bar at a time, right? Yeah, one bar at a time, and then just realizing that, you know, even even it gets more complicated than that. You know, now you got some weird scale or, 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 or weird rhythms and chord changes and stuff that makes it all complicated. But then what's the end goal? The end goal is to make the music sound good. The end goal with data is to to end the suffering of the people who have to live with the consequences, however that's done. So you bring up kind of an interesting point here, is you, you change mediums, so you did the guitar, and then you switch over to bass. And Oz, well, you started out um, as a writer here with the vlogs, but now you're doing videos. Yeah, um, because I had to be honest with myself that I hated managing a blog. I miss writing, but, um, and this gets into the difference between proprietary versus open source. I came to hate WordPress. It slowly became a world occupied by developers who were condescending. I felt, that, okay, I don't need this. I don't need to wake up in the morning and my open source blog has crashed because of some uh, conflict with a plugin and now of me for having so many plugins. I don't need that world. But Camtasia, I'm not going to wake up one morning and Camtasia has just blown up because of some random person's plugin. Um, It'll just blow up on, on its own. <laughs> yeah, and then we go to TechSmith to deal with it, oh. not some random person. Well, uh, I think I can get my barb in now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you... Uh, so, so you you saw on Reddit the the man going after the tiger. Oh yeah. I think the tiger ate him. Um, that that won't happen uh, on, you know, my my blog or, or Alex's. But if you do want to get eaten by a tiger, you can go to Stack Overflow. Oh. 
Yeah. Um, talking about communities. Mm. Yeah. That, that's so a rough now, one. That, Daniel is asking about, do we think the future, in the future, if we're going to see more intuitive Excel? Dude, the future is now. Where do you guys think it could go from here? Oz, you have some well, NDA disclosure, so you can't talk too much about it. But if you want to do some well, sign language I, or something. I, 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 right, right. I like... <laughs> I like what Excel, what the Excel development team is doing with um, Power BI, uh, getting Transform, Power Pivot. They're listening to the needs. Um, it seems like they realize that a lot of people are using Excel like a database. So, but then a lot of people don't have a database or they don't have the excess bandwidth to deal with the learning curve associated with the database. So why not bring some of that into Excel because people are doing it already and kind of hacky ways. So by bringing those things into Excel, it's a beautiful thing. Now, intuitive, I don't know because I started doing a series on, uh, on my YouTube channel where I'm pointing out strange things that getting transformed does now we don't need all the complicated stuff that we needed in native excel but the stuff that's happening in getting transformed is not always so intuitive um there's goofy things that happen it hard codes uh column headers and that creates problems that are not intuitive until something blows up and then you got to go research it if I can interject here, I, I can say Excel's biggest problem right now is versioning. Okay, versioning, yeah, now that's, that's yeah. And I People don't know. are still working on 2007, still yeah. working on 97 to 03. Uh, you know, I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday, just kind of shooting the breeze. I'm still in Excel 2013, and I look at all the amazing things that 2016 has, and I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, that will be great when I finally get that one day. And there, yeah. there's oh, so many great things that are happening right now with Excel, but either your IT department uh, budgeting is unwilling to, you know, cut the check. The barrier for I entry. I have a question for Daniel. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just want to ask about a more intuitive Excel. Do you mean, my first reaction when I hear that is, do you mean like less VBA, more power query, or am I off, off there? like making it more uh, consumer facing while still being very powerful. Because mm, that's kind of what I would envision. I've also noticed, so Microsoft, like their problem is not the technology. Uh, I think a lot of it's marketing. I think people still see Excel as this oh. kind of curmudgeonly old package, you know, that hasn't changed in 20 years. And that's very wrong. <laughs> and yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these things, you know, like Power BI and, and Power Query and all that stuff. Like Alex says, you know, the versioning does make it difficult. Um, you know, at my former workplace, I couldn't get that stuff on my machine. Um, so I guess kind of like IT relations slash marketing. I mean, it's definitely not the technology. I mean, they, you know, like I think that. I mean, how much is a Tableau license? Like thousands of dollars, and then Excel's like you know a fraction of that. And yeah. as Jordan Goldmeyer shows us, it holds its own in yeah. dashboards. So, yeah, a thousand dollars a year per user for Tableau versus twelve dollars a month for yeah. uh, Office three sixty five. Pro Plus, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the whole marketing thing, and I feel like the community not just Microsoft, but also the community has to stand up and say, you know, look, knock it off, you know? Um, and I've had to, you know, deal with situations where somebody wants, they want to try Tableau before they try the Excel solution. Uh, they want to try a true database and then nothing winds up happening because they don't they they can't support a database with the small office that they have or 
um, like Salesforce.com can be a monster to get that thing going. It's great yeah. on the front end as a user, but getting that thing going, geez. Um, so, and you know, and you know, people keep to- posting this domo on my on my oh, Facebook God. page. Oh my and, God! Uh, <laughs> you know, because they they are presenting themselves as the Excel killer. Why are you still using spreadsheets? Let's face it, ex- Excel is not a reporting tool. Well, domo is not being clear that they cost thirty thousand dollars to start with. So they need to stop tr- stop that. And <laughs> and as the Excel community, it would help us to say, y'all, shut up. Go sit down. Do we have, well, do we have good that, people that, leading the charge on that right now? Do you think, Oz? I, I try, but, but there aren't many. So I was, uh, I was doing some uh, Google Trends research earlier today, and I'm going to write a blog post about it, but... You know the the normal thing, especially from what people ask me, is oh, so you blog about Excel? You know, why don't you blog about R? You know, why don't you blog about Python? You know, all this other stuff. And uh, I'm I'm looking through the the search trends, and you know, Excel's held constant. You know, it's not really increasing, but unlike like SAS or SPSS or these like proprietary statistical softwares, you know it's staying steady they're going down python and r are going up excel staying the same so i think it's like this false dichotomy that like you know python or like r can somehow cannibalize excel you know and that you know nobody's going to use excel anymore everybody's going to use r it's it's not like choose one you know they can actually work really well together yes and that's yes. one of the things that microsoft is getting better at they used to be such a you know closed garden with office uh, they're getting a lot better at kind of playing well with with other packages, and you can use yes. R in Power BI now, and you can do this kind of stuff. Um, so it's not like you know the rise of Python is to the detriment of Excel or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. Well, Microsoft even opened up their calculation engine to APIs now. So as a programmer, you could even call on their engine. So yeah. I, I think they're trying to be programmer friendly. Yeah. Especially in the past, where they've been a little bit more guarded with their technology. Yeah, right. and that's important. And 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 I'm glad you're bringing this up. Is that yeah, it's not an either or thing. It's you know just having the tools available. And um, I gave a presentation to some data scientists, and they appreciated it. They embraced it because they're in a world where their clients or coworkers send them spreadsheets, and then they spend hours programming something. In, Python or R and not knowing that they can handle some things in Excel with some things that are already baked into Excel. So go ahead and unstack that data and then move it into R or Python. That's fine. You know, but the word needs to be spread that that is possible. And you're doing and, a good job with that, I think. Oh, especially I with, with Power Query. Um it's really not something that I've used a lot, and you know now I think about it because of your videos. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You're leading the charge, Oz, of the next generation <laughs> here. <laughs> well, haven't seen a lot, and you know when you ask about you know where do you find your place, and one thing that helped me has been working with people, uh, students, workshop students. Um, clients and understanding no the problem here isn't that you don't know how to nest a sum inside of VLOOKUP inside of an index no the thing is is thinking this through and being able to describe the problem in English and then laying the data out properly so that's where I have gone to focus is you know I could show you how to nest all that stuff together, and that would be like um, showing you how to use a wrench and a screwdriver. And then what are you gonna build with a wrench and a screwdriver? Anything or nothing, <laughs> and not much in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so how about we build some stuff and do some thinking <clears throat> and get some concepts in, so that a person can take the wrench and the screwdriver and go build something that they need 
So I like your idea of concepts here, and uh, you know, we'll kind of tie it in here with being musicians. Like, mm. There's always the article I have to write to get to the article that I want to write. Like I, I had to write a VLOOKUP article just because I had to do it to get to the mm-hmm. next problem mm-hmm. that I, I really wanted to solve for you. And uh, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of like music. You know, either you know your verses, choruses, and kind of dealing with crescendos and different cadences and things that you want to kind of deal with. Like, how does music influence your own your own guys' personal styles? Because you both have really good content that I think has its punching moment, where it's like, be like, all right, here's good stuff, here's good stuff, bam, there it is. Now uh, it sticks. Uh-huh. Now I know why. You know, I'm gonna keep coming back to the content, and that's what I always appreciate from your guys' your guys' stuff. How how do how do you guys blend, or how do you guys approach it? Well, let me say hi to Grenade Dugan in Canada. <laughs> all right, thanks for being here. All right. George, you take that question. I will take that question. Uh, I think one thing that goes back to Oz talking about his old man making him play scales. And, you know, then he went and played songs. And, you know, it was just a different learning experience. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of Excel training is like learning scales, right? It's like, here's how you do a sum if. Here's how you do, you know, here's this function. Um, and I think that maybe because all of us are musicians, we don't really do that. We, we play songs with, with our blog posts. You know, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you kind of, you learn the notes and the scales within the context of the song. Um, so I think that that probably is how I got influenced, how the music influences me. I actually wrote a post about why music makes me a better analyst. I'm going to copy and paste that nice. into the uh, comments now. Um, but yeah, I think that is one. And that's the whole debate about, you know, pedagogy and music scales versus learning songs. And it's important. You have to know all the foundations, but you know, you, you never really learn how to contextualize things that way. Well, you know, and I'll, I'll say something that, that I get your point, but then slightly disagree because when I was learning and I started getting into theory and I asked somebody about what do you say to people who say scales aren't important, you're being too rigid and bookish about it and you're gonna make stiff music. I don't know all that theory and stuff, but I got gigs. And um, the guy I was asking this, you know, I said, what do you say to somebody like that? And he said, okay, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> you know. Because, right, you got people who play by ear. They've got a really good ear and they can play music. And maybe it is the hard to talk with them. You know, they got to go grab their instrument and say it's right here and this is where I put my fingers. But they're making some good music and they're getting paid for it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I've, uh, I, I, I do read music. I mean, I'm not like a self-taught uh, musician. Um, and, and I find it valuable to have that. You know, shared language of of written music. A shared language. A um, shared language. But, yeah, you know that old kind of method about you know learn this in that scale uh, versus you know well let's you know see how it works in this song and kind of you know get a real sense sense for the music. Um, yeah, so that's probably yeah. my my bigger influence um, with blogging. Um, and one thing I'd say is when I f- okay so learning about a song or, or learning about a new scale or something or hearing something inside a song and wonder why is this so cool here and being able to dig and peel it apart um that's like excel for me okay like going into power query and finding out what is this pivot don't aggregate oh okay now we got something that's why that thing worked right there, because they put that note, they they put that hit on the on the E of three instead of right on three, and now that makes this thing feel different. That's the secret sauce right there. Um, so being able to dig into music and hear music a certain way, that gets to be some exciting stuff, and then things aren't so mysterious, and then things are as simple as oh it was just moved from here to here that's all but it had this huge impact on the feeling that result yeah 
Yeah. Well, and that 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 I see a really good similarity between, you know, learning a piece of music and looking at a, a new spreadsheet, right? Like, a really good musician uh, is not going to start playing the piece from the beginning to the end every time. You know, like I try to, and it's hard because it you know messes with you. You know, let's start from you know three quarters to to the end. You know, let's play halfway and and stop three bars in, and and you start chunking things and you see little pieces, yes. and they almost start like little pieces of code or like a new function or something yes. like that. And I think you do go into a spreadsheet and instead of okay, let me start in cell A one. You know, you can kind of you know oh here's this it relates here. You know, you yeah. can really it allows you to kind of chunk things and and see patterns. Um, and yeah, I, this is good. You know, my yeah. uh, 25 years of playing the violin finally paid <laughs> off tonight. <laughs> and, and, a, and a shout out to Jeff Brad for the fellow bassist. Glad glad oh, you man. joined us, Jeff. Another four yeah. That's nice. So that's always yeah. one of my favorite parts about Excel is getting into the mindset of somebody else's spreadsheet and finding that rhythm. Because once you find it, you're like, oh, now I get why they were doing it the way that they were doing it. Yeah. You know, sometimes you'll yeah. you'll learn something, and then other times it's an opportunity to teach them something. And that's always something yeah. I enjoy is giving it back. Yeah. And, and you're so right about doing the forensics on somebody else's thing. And this is where I don't I don't like the idea of, of laughing at people for their messy spreadsheet because having dug into so many messy spreadsheets i began to get this person was thinking oh there's and a pattern they, they there were, I, yes i can see the path they were on what was missing was knowing how to communicate with excel to get the best out of the data that's the only thing with this person was not stupid and they don't need to be laughed at they they need to be respected for making the effort and then say okay Let's join hands and go off in this direction. And that's one thing that I feel like I missed early when I was learning to play bass. I wanted to slap and I wanted to do all kind of things. And then ah, slapping is not music. Um, OK, and then putting the wrong bass line with a song and then having somebody like, you know, I, you know, Jocko 3X and um, uh, David Jennings was a drummer, got together and they helped me hear music. Say, okay, why did my bass line not work with this song? Because I was mimicking this other song and this guy was mm -hmm. doubling the organ. And that's why his bass line worked right there with this busy stuff. And the drummer got out of his way. Okay, so now what about over here with Excel? Okay, you're trying to set yourself up to get data to go into a graph, but first you got to clean the data up and then you got to stage the data somewhere to put it in the graph. Okay, now we funkin'. Now we get some asses moving on the dance floor. <laughs> oh, Ron here said, great point, guys. 99% of, of Excel teachings about how the various features work. Uh, like piano teacher teaching how to press the keys and press the pedals. It, it, it all comes back to fundamentals, you know. I, yeah. I'm thinking of like a recent experience where a guy... I was just walking by casually, and he said, it would be really nice if I could freeze this top row. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he oh, probably looked at this question. problem for, you know, yeah, he probably looked at this problem for six to ten months. And I always call this, like, the nature versus nurture. Like, if your environment is not one that wants you to be constantly developing in a skill, and they're fine with just getting by. And I, I never fault anybody for doing what it takes to get to the end result. But I stopped by and I said, go to the view tab, press freeze pane. And he was like, wow, that is awesome. Yeah. You know, yes, yes. Those little moments, if you can bottle those up, man, they're lightning. They're so mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. huh. It's like the time I showed a guy proper oh. for months. Mm. He had been retyping these names. Wow. And when I came over to his desk and showed him proper. He doodled in his clothes. <laughs> but no, I didn't really. But anyway, <laughs> no, no, he, but he, he was dumbfounded. He was like, what? Just like when I found VLOOKUP, I had been, um, uh, would I get this report 
and they would just employee codes and a whole bunch of employee names with the codes over here and a whole bunch of terminated people and then I gotta match all this stuff up together and I was sort and filter sort and filter I feel like I was spoiled I was introduced to VLOOK, VLOOK up early in my oh, oh. you one of those fancy guys no man born, born with a silver spoon in your mouth <laughs> VLOOK up right there yeah when I had to do it the hard way Oh, wrong this, side of the tracks. <laughs> so this is always kind of an interesting point for me. Is I always like to own that title, of like the Excel guy. Like I love being a resource for people, whether yes, I know it yes. or not. At least I have the know the know with all to go find that answer for you online or somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think some people either shy away from kind of sharing their either their knowledge or maybe they are just afraid to ask. You know, I think as kind of community contributors, I you know, you guys are doing a great job of making it accessible. You know, George has a really good business first. Like, a lot of people are approaching it from that end. And Oz, you're just all over the place, man. You're so unique. I, I don't think there's anybody like you out there. <laughs> yeah. These all are all right. compliments. Let me put it that way. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. But, <laughs> but you're finding an audience, and they're responding to it positively. Like Well, and... Uh... It's, it's taken a bit, and I credit uh, Mike Gervin for being kind of an encouragement for me um, because he just openly admitted that he does not like to write. Video is his thing. He doesn't apologize for not being some master of VBA code, and I was thinking that, yeah, I got to stop apologizing or hiding the fact that I don't like writing code, you know, but I can do it. Yeah. But um but yeah the whole giving back thing and sharing knowledge because it for me it is always can we end somebody's misery because me hoarding knowledge you know there's still somebody out there miserable because the data's jacked up so i i want to have just this this army this this these warriors with their torn clothes and scars because they've been out whooping crap data's ass <laughs> and ending misery. Gorilla data analysis. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. I, I think this songs, comes back to music too, though. It's like how many songs do you have to write that weren't hits before you finally found the one? Like that mm -hmm. fell flat. Like, you know, you can write an article that goes on deaf ears that you spent 10, 15 hours on. You felt really great about it, and nobody cares or reads it. You know, this is one of the conversations I had with Mike Alexander. He says, the longest posts I wrote never had any views, but the quick little hit ones, he's like, everybody write them up and down. <laughs> and that's always where it comes back to me, like being authentic. I love writing long posts, and they're such a torturous experience at times. But I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of doing these video things, it's made me realize, hey, there is kind of something fun in video. You know, either by... What, what, what do you find fun in video? In these interactions, I think the the fact that people are able to ask questions and interact, and also the fact that I can mess up live and everybody is like, I know how that feels like. You know, I spent three hours today trying to solve a problem, and as soon as I jumped in my car, it the universe unveiled itself to me in two minutes. I was away from a computer, but I solved the problem. Yeah. That's the part that I love. Yeah. It, it, Excel is a frustrating experience, but as soon as you kind of cross the plateau, Mm -hmm. Man, it's so rewarding. That's a high that a lot of people either haven't realized yet or haven't experienced. But it's one that I always kind of constantly strive for. But, you know, kind of with you guys, you're you're kind of doing all over the board here with either blogs or video. Oz, yeah, I, I shifted kind a of, lot more to kind of video. Straight. Um, I just, I find it a more um, realistic simulation of being in the office and somebody asking you, oh, you know, how do you do X or Y? Um, I, I just find it a lot more conducive uh, for Excel training um, than trying to write everything out and all the screenshots and, you know, then you get 15 pages and, you know, you try to follow <laughs> along. Um, so I just drifted to, to video. Um, but I yeah. still love to write. I would say that Anything, anything that's more Excel related, I'm, I'm making a video. If it's more just like, you know, I mentioned that I'm working on a post on 
uh, kind of Google Trends as far as people learning different software, um, I'll turn that into like a written blog post. So it kind of depends on what kind of message I want to convey. Will has a pretty um, good uh, message here. He said, strong internal resources are hard to find. It's tough to learn from people who have the idea but don't know how to execute. That's why people tap the resources such as you folks. So that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, Will's finding an alternative thanks. medium outside of his office confines. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to Will for being here and Ernie Johnson. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what's cool about the community at large at, at Excel. You know, starting out, I saw this mm -hmm. cool guy named Oz wearing a Bears jersey. And he was like, "All right, how, how do I, how do I kind of get him to be my mentor? How do I reach out to him?" And it was really just send a friend request. He hit accept. And he was like, "Oh, well, that was easy." And then, mm -hmm. uh, okay, <laughs> reach out to Rick or Jordan or you know Raim yep. or Puneet, kind of give them shout outs too. You know, those yeah. guys are awesome. Is a, is a great community, you know, and I've done a lot of work with Haran. That was, shoot, man, that was one time, uh, I think two summers ago, we did like 13 hours on Skype. Really? Working on something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the Excel community is great. Zach Barisi, um, John Akampura, all of Mindy Tracy. Rob Colley. Uh, John oh, McLutis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really great community, and that's something to think about when we think about a platform is um, when I say, okay, um, you want to go to Tableau or whatever, what happens when you do need some help um, or some fly-by-night thing that just popped up as the next spreadsheet killer? What happens when you need some help? you're likely to find somebody who knows something about Excel um, versus something else where you got to be on the $900 a month plan in order to get phone help. Wait, okay. Then they're left going on some website and waiting and hoping somebody will answer their question. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. Third party better is all Never trust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we doing enough to advance the cause? Do you think right now? That's an honest question. Um, I think. Um, well, what is enough? I don't know how you how you define enough, but I think that there's a lot, especially when you you know I'm now thinking about Ken Pools and and his website, and he's really pushing our Power BI, and he's yeah. one of the earliest ones with um with uh power query and miguel escobar um so there's a lot of knowledge out there being shared uh, but as far as really letting people know that this is a legitimate development platform i think there isn't enough and i wonder if it's a distinction between you know, a lot of Excel users, right, there. this is not their primary job, but then the people who do R and stuff, that is their job. The DBAs who know databases and, and SQL queries, that's their job. So they are going to trash Excel because usually it's this part-time maverick. Yeah. That's why. That's one other thing that I love <laughs> about the Excel community is we have a bunch of rogues. Completely. And, and <laughs> beautiful rogues. Yes. Uh, so I guess where I'm coming from is where do we plant the flag and say this is the last VLOOKUP article that will ever be written. This is the definitive oh. guide. And then we never talk about it and we just move on to the next big thing. Like that's the part that I always struggle with. Uh, or is it simply we're just reinterpreting in a different way for a different audience? Um, I think there's a couple of things there is there are a lot of bloggers who um, I feel like they're, they're a bit selfish. They're doing their thing. It's about them. And yeah. so they're going to crank out a whole lot of this stuff that's already been done. But if you're going to help the community, look and see um, what might be missing. Um, and one thing I did like a, I don't know, I feel like a 12 minute video on VLOOKUP, which went into the why and the when 
and not just the how. And then talking with somebody who said he's known about VLOOKUP for more than 10 years, but didn't know the why and the when, and my video helped him that way. But I saw no point in just doing a straight how to do a VLOOKUP. Yep. And that's what I love about you, man. Like something like that, approaching it a little bit differently than what everybody else has been kind of been and, doing and finding that space to contribute. Wow. Yeah. And that's what I always like about George's articles too, uh, you know, is hire, get hired with Excel. Like that's a real thing now. People need this skill yeah. on a resume. You can't just lie about it anymore. And yeah. uh Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. falling behind Saw in your on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. If you're falling behind in your talents too, like somebody's gonna surpass you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that I think is a, a really important thing. Um you know, kind of s- scrapping the idea that you know what what I know on day one at the job is what I, what I, I need to know. Uh, you know, and, and getting that spirit of you know continuous improvement and going out there and you know learning more. Um, I think that's what's really important. And I hope that you know by blending some career management kind of stuff in with my blog, that I'm getting more people you know yes. thinking about. Let me get better at Excel, yes. uh, and, and I can see returns on it at work too. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's a space and, that I think you're filling perfectly, George. And I don't see any other competition for you. At least they're not at the level in which you are promoting yourself. So, right, because right. these these are all the things that it takes to be a good analyst. Because there is the tool. And then there is all of the stuff that takes to be good with the tool. Yeah. Because being fast as a running back doesn't help if you can't read a defense. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean that's what's great about the program though. You know? If you if you just need to come in and it takes you eight hours to do a task and somebody else takes five in, that's still perfectly fine in this world. But you know, you might get automated out at some point. You know, I think that's always the the big concern. Yeah. With a job. Oh yeah. 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 Sure. No, I mean, sure. I think if I think if a lot of managers knew, you know, how inefficient a lot of Excel processes really are, that you know, a lot of jobs might change. Um, and you know, I think that guys like us are, uh, you know, helping people control the data, you know, lest it control them. So, yeah, it's important. Oh, man, Haran, uh, go ahead. He went ahead and dropped in his blog here. Uh, Reimagining Excel, roll forward yeah. hell. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And this kind of, if you yeah. know, if I was to provide context of what I do nine to five, it's automate Excel functionality with VBA or VBScript or any type of programming language that I can get my hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I deliver data and content to people faster to make decisions? Like, if you were to ask me in the, in the greater scheme of things, am I an analyst or am I a developer? I'm a developer, like first and foremost. I assume that somebody has figured out their problem and really what they want to do is measure it on a frequency basis. So if they want to measure it daily, weekly, monthly, however they need it done, I need to find the simplest, most effective and accurate way to deliver that that information. That's the realm that I sit in personally. Okay, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I own that you fact that I'm, I'm not an analyst. Man. I'm a developer, and Excel is a great platform for developing. And that's and that's an important distinction to make: is developer for analyst or whatever you're doing, getting clear on that. Yeah. And yeah, and you're doing a good job with that, with these live sessions and with the blog and stuff. And I like the name. It's not about to sell because it's not. You know, how do I get you, know, you thinking so a little bit deeper? Much. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Good. Think of thinking deeper of, from a different angle. Um, rephrase the the question. Oh man. You know, and one one thing that I I keep thinking about is, is how to make a video. Thinking about being conceptual. Step away. You know when you mentioned earlier about being in your car. Um, and then something opens up. Oh. Yeah, sometimes you got to sit the instrument down and relax a bit, and then something else can open up. Uh, you know, sitting my bass down and listening and writing stuff. 
and asking questions and digging and say, okay, now I can go back to my base with a whole different access to this song or whatever. Notepad is probably still one of my favorite tools. So, mm. <laughs> you know, it's always nice to just write yourself little notes of like, all right, how do, how do I get to where I want to be? Yes, the steps. yes, 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 yeah. yes. It's, it's always logical. My, yep, yep, because a big tool I've got is, is my, my gigantic whiteboard over here. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm jealous. Mm. Well, we have got uh, nine people still here. We'll kind of let them ask any questions if they have any, and yeah, you know, we'll kind of wrap things up here. We've already gone about an hour and fifteen. I think we'd probably go about another two, but you know, <laughs> we'll take it to some dark places. I don't think people are ready to go to yet. Uh, dark places. <laughs> oh, yeah. We already talked about Stack Overflow. So. Oh God, <laughs> don't remind me. <laughs> uh, well, for the meantime, sure. Do you guys have anything coming up that you guys wanted to share? I know you guys are doing a lot out there. Different courses or God. Oz plug your Excel or your uh, YouTube Excel on Fire channel. What you kind of yep, got going on? Yep, Excel. Yep, Excel on Fire. Um, I'm having a, a, a lot more fun with that. Doing a lot more with video and adding drama and fun with it. And clear, I'm not the guy for if you're sitting at work and you need to get something happening. That's not me. But it's more for the person who does want a fun approach I want to make Excel safe um, and not inundating uh, and show people concepts of thinking of working with data um, and leave you with new something uh, practical rather than just you know here is some function and a series I did recently was about the strange things that uh, getting transformed does that are not intuitive. Um, and one thing that's coming up is the Amsterdam uh, Excel Summit in April. That's going to be exciting. That's uh, April 18th and 19th, I believe, in Amsterdam. Congratulations, so, Oz. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to be teaching two sessions uh, data cleansing and helping people with strategies knowing that there are things that need to be done does native Excel do it better or does getting transformed do it better I was about to ask you a personal question if you don't mind mm, okay Go ahead. How, how, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to frame it here how do you look back on Excel in the way that it's been able to take you around the world? It's pretty awesome. You've been able to go to Canada feel, with the program. Now you're going to Amsterdam. I feel blessed. Um, I, that every day I'm appreciative of Excel for allowing this and for the people who've reached out and allowed me to, to help and participate. Um, truly blessed that's awesome and I see it too within my you know my lifestyle or my you know trying to define it here uh, comfort of living like Excel has given me a lot and I'm very appreciative of the program in that respect mm -hmm. so you know respect the program and you know kind of hone in on your craft and I think that's where George wants to get his program either getting hired or you know getting promoted even hopefully that's the next course getting promoted with Excel but, oh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> but there is, there is a platform or there is different steps in which this program can take you, you know, from a uh, either global sense or just even a local sense. So yeah, I, I find that well, to I be mean, very I'll, appreciative. Yeah, I'll, I'll give an example of, of last summer. I just so happened to be landing in Portland, and I know a guy in Portland, um, and it is – incredible yeah i got to meet oz um you know it seems like anytime i log into you know social media or email or whatever you know half the people that i'm in regular contact with are other excel bloggers and these i would have never have met any of you guys if i hadn't you know put a few things up about excel um so that whole community aspect is not to be overlooked you know if, if you want to start writing and blogging and and I you know people ask me all the time about like oh you know 
I kind of want to start blogging, but I don't really know, you know, what it's going to be about or, or whatever. And it's just like, right. just do it. Like you really, yeah. I mean, just the people that you meet to me alone is, you know, wor worth the effort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got a question from Will here. What types of injuries have you gents enhanced processes and utility marketing, et cetera? Um, so mine, mine is a pretty boring answer. I deal with financial uh, industry, but a really cool guy that I met, you know, through the Excel community, he was doing, uh, basically, he was doing an analysis of ambulances up in Canada and trying to find the shortest route of distance. And he was analyzing okay. that data. And he was, he was saving lives by yeah. using uh, 3D maps within Excel and also using, you know, kind of different charts and lookup functions and this and that. And I was like, wow, I, I'm seeing Excel being used in real time for real purposes. And that kind of stuff is very cool to me. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do the doing? boring stuff. I just do money and oh. that's it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so I worked in retail for a couple of years, uh, mostly doing like, uh, demand planning, like product forecasting. Um, then I was at a hospital for a couple of years. Uh, did a lot of like HR, um, incentives and compensation kind of, you know, you know, paying out millions of dollars in incentives and Oz and I have had this conversation about managing commissions and incentives, um, and payroll in Excel. Um, so I, I'm in, I'm a student right now. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I'm working on is actually, I'm doing a lot more with R and Python. Um, so not doing a lot of Excel stuff, you know, at, at my day job now, but Again, it's such an important part for me, you know, to stay active in the community, even though I'm not really using it full time anymore. So, yeah. So, well, um, well, hey to Bill Hillman. Glad to see you here, uh, old friend from Chicago. Um, so, man, where the industries that I've influenced, um, it started out with uh, customer service. Yeah. and paying bonuses um then professional licenses uh so we we're managing curriculums and based on certain rules around the curriculum who's completed that then it goes into uh commissions compensations um all kinds of, and then when i started freelance and then yeah, i dealt with a company that delivers food by bicycle and they had all these delivery routes. Now they got to take their sales data out of the website and convert it into delivery routes um, and packing lists. So um, Wednesday's A route needs 15 quarts of salmon chowder. Um, what else? Uh, I feel we're going to end up on your my, adult entertainment. Uh, Hmm? I feel like we're gonna end up on your adult entertainment career here. What was it? The uh, the toys? <laughs> oh, 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 man. It, all kinds of stuff. If it's data, <laughs> if it's data, it can be put in Excel. Oh. I think, I think you think you're talking about that personal massager one that yeah, I did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if it's data, if because man because so so if you had like we got an audience here for it guys that, if you want to tell your story feel free well no, no basically <laughs> if, if so the idea being this was a real conversation and basically if you had like four vibrators that you're thinking about buying what are the criteria to decide which one is the one to buy and it can turn come down to the price of it the size of it how it's powered how easy it is to keep clean, um, the quality of the result it provides, all of those things. And so if you have all of that laid out, you can say, OK, price doesn't matter to me. So then you give that um, a lower score. But if the how it's powered is more important, then give that a higher multiplier so that in the end, out of the four that you're considering, you can get the one that is is optimal. 
based on some all rank the, formulas and some other things here. Rank and and <laughs> and spin buttons and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> you just got to think about you know what is the challenge here and what is the what is the um result I want out of this. So I can here a link to that video. Um, and, and and see that's the kind of thing that's fascinating to me is to think okay let's take this seriously because there is data let's get away from what the uh the the foundation of this is and really think about this is data that's all it is songs you know get talk about embalming dead bodies okay get away from the embalming of dead bodies and think about what are the data points that we need here to pay attention to. I'm reminded of your, uh, what was it, like the, yeah, the Grim Reaper chart that you put together, how close they were to death and rations of food. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Making a, a timeline, a variable timeline that says, okay, the apocalypse happened here, and here is when we're all dead. Now, here is also a chart of all the food that we've got. So now as the food diminishes or somebody finds food, okay, now uh, the apocalypse stays, but then our time left, that moves. So pay attention. And that's all data. I was about to say, it all comes back to data. Uh, Ron says he, he manages without one here on your, uh, your adult comments. I got my buddy uh -huh. Nick here on uh, just jumping in. I did about three hours of VBA with him earlier this week, and – that was painful, but we did it. We got to the end of it. We concatenated a couple strings, and you know what? We kicked that can down the road to the next problem. And I think that's what's always great about Excel. Figure out the next thing you need to solve. Uh oh, uh, there we go. Uh, so we'll kind of go and wrap it up here. We didn't get All any right. more questions, but really appreciate you guys kind of jumping on tonight. Um, yeah. And Haran asked, "Hot, when we coming back? When we coming back?" Oh, man. You know, I, I do this weekly. I want to try and get over to kind of doing table objects here in the future. Um, kind of going over structural references. Like I said, that was kind of the big skill for me that opened up the pathway to Excel. Uh, that's kind of the next video. If you guys want to kind of keep joining in on these, you know, we can definitely kind of jump in once a month. I would love to get other guests, too, because that kind of talk about the, the community at large. There's so many unique, great people out there. They're doing fantastic yes. things. We need to highlight them. And I really feel like that's carrying the, the flag for Excel as a whole yes. in promoting it and getting it to that next level of not only respect that it deserves, but also letting people know that even a version or two away is not that far off from 2016. And maybe there are a couple things that can help you in the day-to-day -day right now and maybe help you get that conversation going with either your HR or your spouse and telling them, hey, can I just spend, you know, this quick, uh, was it $300 for Pro Professional Plus or $20 or $12? Just start working on your skills. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a, a thing for me that I always come back to is, and this is also carrying the flag, is the Microsoft Office Specialist and the MVP Awards, they, they mean so much to me. And really, I, I wish we could carry those flags more. And Oz, I appreciate the work that you've done and the fact that you've kind of re-earned that. Um, nice. You know, that's that's an obtainable goal that I, I'm saying, I see it, I want it. I want to contribute as much as possible to kind of get there. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And yeah, and this kind of stuff is, is helpful because the community building aspect is really key. Yeah. You know, in addition to the knowledge. Yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of keep doing these, but I'm going to wrap up for tonight. Appreciate everybody for kind of uh, right. tuning in. And man, this has been awesome. Hour and 15. Yeah. Oh, ooh, actually, an yeah. hour and 25. So. Wow. All wow. right. Good stuff. All right. Well, appreciate it, Facebook. Until next time. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody Thank who you. tuned in. Thanks, George and Alex. All right. Thanks, All right. Thanks guys.